What's going on everyone? It's Alex here from Alex Physio. So today we are going to try to answer the question, do ribs actually slip? So let's talk a little bit about slipping ribs or, or slipped rib syndrome. What's actually happening? The slipped rib syndrome is defined as a, a bunch of symptoms that arise from irritation or impingement of the intercostal nerves. Now, before we get into all that, let's just do a quick rundown of the anatomy. So we have a rib cage. We have 12 pairs of ribs. We have seven true ribs or seven ribs that attach directly to the sternum via the costal cartilage. Then we have false ribs, which are ribs eight, nine, and 10 that attach to the costal cartilage directly superior to the one above. And then we have our floating ribs and that's our rib 11 and 12. Those are the ones that originate around the vertebrae, but they don't actually attach anywhere. And with slipping rib syndrome, the premise is that if somebody has an injury to their costal cartilage or they have hypermobility or a trauma, when they do a sudden movement or they generate pressure around that area, the thought is that that injury or irritation to that costal region is causing the costal cartilage because it doesn't actually have a true attachment point. It's causing that costal cartilage to curl up. And as a result, that's pinching or irritating those intercostal nerves, which is explaining the pain that people are having. And that initial mechanism, when it does curl up, that is creating some of that sensation that the rib is slipping or subluxing. What have we found with regards to the research? So there isn't a lot of research. There's a lot of anecdotal evidence that dates back over 100 years that is explains the slipping rib phenomenon, but not a lot of concrete evidence to support that that's actually happening. And remember, people can perceive something as happening, but isn't actually happening physiologically. But it's real, it's theirs, it's just that's their perception. But what we have found, there's a research article done in 2019 where they took about 45 patients and they basically did real-time ultrasound and they asked the individuals to try to provoke their symptoms by various maneuvers meant to generate pressure around that area. And they were using ultrasound in that region. And when that sensation that it slipped arise or that increase in pain, they did actually see changes in that area where the costal cartilage was suggesting that um, there was some movement happening, which is an interesting finding. But other than that, not a lot of research. Um, there is something that you can do called a nerve block. So a nerve block on the intercostal nerves to confirm the diagnosis after a positive ultrasound um, test. And basically what's going on there is if the symptoms are lessened with the, when you block the intercostal nerve or numb that nerve, then that's a positive finding that that is responsible for the symptoms that you're feeling, the irritation of that intercostal nerve. There's another test called the hooking maneuver where you basically hook your fingers underneath the bottom of the rib cage and you try to pull up and forward, forward, and you're trying to see if that's reproducing some of the symptoms or if it reproduces that clunking sound or that, uh, that sensation that the rib is slipped. It's important to be mindful of some of these interventions and that again, there isn't a lot of research to support the evidence that a rib is actually slipping, especially if it's happening at the false ribs where it's not actually attaching anywhere. And try not to use that, that terminology because it creates a, a sense of dependency and a, a belief that you know their, their rib cage is unstable because it's it's creating a sensation that it is slipping and also erroneously you know when some say that they can return that rib back into position by doing a, a rib manipulation and it's important to note that even if there was some sort of movement around the costal cartilage because it's not attaching anywhere by you applying a pressure uh, to do that manipulation, you're creating a neurophysiological effect that makes, that releases endorphins and chemicals that just make that area feel better, but you're not actually putting anything into place. And it's, it's sometimes a little bit frustrating when it's described in that way that you are putting it into place because again, it creates that dependency. What can be 
done with slipping rib syndrome. And it's important doing uh, working on some exercise to try to improve the mobility and the strength in some of the muscles in that region. Uh, exercise that work on thoracic rotation, extension, just to promote some of that mobility. Um, in addition to some strength exercises around the abdominal area, just trying to match the exercise and the program based on the individual. And obviously you need to see a, a physiotherapist with regards to to that but it is important to know that it is extremely rare in terms of this occurring and it's important to know that you're ruling out any sort of other red flags that may mimic some of these uh, pains that people are having anytime you're dealing with something in that rib region especially if there was a traumatic incident that was that happened before the onset of some of these symptoms so to answer the question do ribs actually slip I don't believe that they do based on what some of the research is saying and just um, the lack of research. It is very rare, but nonetheless, it can still feel as if there is a slip actually happening based on how people present it. People's perceptions are real. That's what they feel, but sometimes they, they can lie to us in terms of it's not actually what's happening physiologically. Important to go see your family physician or physiotherapist to try to help you with some of the, the pain and to make that diagnosis. So there you have it. We talked a little bit about slipping rib syndrome. I'll post a link to the research articles that I was looking over in the description below. Have you had a slipped rib or have you been diagnosed with a slipped rib? What has worked and what hasn't worked? Let me know down in the comments below. I'd love to hear some of your stories. Please consider subscribing if you have found value in this video and check out some of my other videos where I go over other conditions. Until then, we'll see you in the next video. Thanks for watching.